we are no longer consumers of technology i think we have to shift our gear to become producers which is very important for us right as as a production house for ai for what we do you know the the fact that we have so many use cases that are lying in front of us we need to take charge of that and actually produce those use cases we still depend on numbers for our kids rather than the quality of education or the quality of skill that our kid is having I think that needs to go away from the new society and I think our kids are changing it. And I think our kids know better. They are a much more informed generation. There is nobody stopping India from reaching that top position of being the most innovative country in terms of what we produce. And we've got the scale to prove it, right? The number of people that we impact, the number of uh, lives and households that we would impact. You scale because of people. You scale because you persist. You scale because you wanted to do something as an idea for the country within the country and also for the world hello and welcome to this exclusive interview series for ATI insights and today i have a very special guest with me nikhil malhotra who is the chief innovation officer and the global head of makers lab at tech mahindra nikhil welcome to ATI insights thank you jigjit thank you it's a pleasure to start off with there's an ai ecosystem here you know it's not a conversation of yesterday it's a conversation we are having right now yeah today itself what gaps do you see in this ai ecosystem today in india so india has progressed but i think india is still a little far behind from an, from the ai race when we consider ai we actually consider us and china to be top of the race and there are a few reasons for it i think number one the gap is largely on the rnd in terms of what we are doing right and one of the first things that we have to do is we are no longer consumers of technology i think we are now we have to shift our gear to become producers which is very important for us right as as a production house for ai for what we do you know the the fact that we have so many use cases that are lying in front of us we need to take charge of that and actually produce those use cases number one number two is if the west produces a large language model we suddenly rush saying that we have to do do that as well I think one of the things that we can change is there are so many things that we can do to actually change the algorithm in terms of how AI is actually built because the Indian ecosystem of AI is very different right so I've got 19200 un unofficial dialects being spoken how do I actually make sure that one system works for all of them right so there's a data collection part that actually comes in so the first gap is R&D how do we invest more into the R&D ecosystem the second is the collaboration piece that we do with academia industry and also the government i think these are the three pillars for any democracy at this point in time we have connections with academic institutions but i think it's not to that level where we can produce like for example i i give an example of us to people saying most of the innovation in us happens from the us army the darpa challenge produces a lot of things starting from internet that we actually got to self driving cars which was a darpa challenge as well can we do that same from an indian standpoint as well and i think our government is on the right path in telling this in also producing some of these facets but i think that organized structure of how academia and industry comes together i think that is important for us that's the second gap the third gap is we've got hundreds of startups and you would have seen right lot of startups come and flourish but almost 90% of them don't reach the scale that we want to reach Yeah. and there's a reason for it the reason for that is that most startups would start with a myopic idea they'll try and finish that idea and then they'll have to be taken into a broader skill it's also now becoming exceedingly important for corporates big corporates like us to include some of these startups in our mold and change their myopic idea to a long standing scaled idea i think if these three gaps are fulfilled and i think the fourth is probably the academics we still depend on numbers for our kids rather than the quality of education or the quality of skill that our kid is having i think that needs to go away from the new society and i think our kids are changing it and i think our kids know better they are a much more informed generation and uh, i have got two sons 11 and 6 both of them probably would know more about certain things that i wouldn't and i think we are learning from them as well right as a generation i think if we can subtly make sure that these gaps are fulfilled there is nobody stopping india from reaching that top position of being the most innovative country in terms of what we produce and we've got the scale to prove it right the number of people that we impact the number of uh, lives and households that we would impact i think those are the gaps that we that i think can be fulfilled by us right interesting you touched upon scalability very curious to know makers lab yeah. you work with ideas that have broken through yeah how does makers lab help these ideas scale through 
so the way my team is structured is I've got a research team which goes directly into Makers Lab. And by the way, I made Makers Lab in 2014. And the whole idea was I was, I was very inspired from the West in terms of how they looked at R&D and innovation. So I wanted to bring in R&D and innovation in a corporate world as well. I think most of the times, there's a lot of work that we do for profit because we are a for-profit organization. But I also thought that there can be a purpose behind what we do. The way we scale it is uh, very funny, right? And there are different stories in terms of how we scale, right? So we, when I came back to India, my only purpose was, can machines speak my language? Having worked with IBM Watson about 20 years back as a researcher, also having seen Watson's growth, I thought, why can't India and Indian languages do the same? So I came back with one idea only. Can I do Hindi? Because obviously I speak Hindi and Punjabi. Can I put Hindi and Punjabi into the, into the machine? And the third was obviously Sanskrit. Um, right. All of us go through that Sanskrit quagmire during our, during our early phases. So I said, these three languages, I'll try and put it. When I came and opened this lab in Pune, one of the first person who I made an employee of the lab was an Uber driver. Oh. And there's a very interesting incident that this Uber driver used to drop me to international uh, airports because obviously Pune doesn't have one. And in one of those conversations, he says, I want to do technology. So from a hardcore technologist, it was, you know, very nonchalant way that I actually spoke to him and said, why don't you learn Python? And I went and I still remember I was going to Australia. I came back. And when I came back, this person had the laptop on his front seat. And I sat down on his back seat and he said, Sir, look here, I've done some Python codes. So that started a kind of connection with him in terms of how he's learning Python. And remember, Uber drivers in India are not the same as Uber drivers across the world. They come from a very different background and so on and so forth. So that person started coming to the lab, uh, which we had just built, almost for two hours every day. We got so enamored by the success that he had that this person learned almost one or two programming languages he learned the art of designing on his own. So he said, we'll make you an employee. We made him an employee. The first challenge that came to me is how do I take this to the younger population, kids in the rural sectors. So we made a system called Bhamal. It's called Bharat Markup Language. The idea is that we allowed Indian kids, rural kids to code in the language of their own choice. Okay. So you can code in Punjabi, Marathi, Bengali, Uriya, Telugu. And this is actual coding, right? This is not something that you're making a website. This is actual code. How do I take it to the rest of the world, right? The rest of India. I still remember we were out of COVID and because he was an Uber driver, he said, Sir, I go. You wouldn't imagine that this person traveled 8,000 kilometers on his car solo, wow. took this bhamal as a picture, as a, as a construct to all the rural sectors that he touched upon, put his flag over there that I've trained them with bhamal. And today we have almost about 150,000 kids in the country, rural kids, who actually know this Bhaman and some of the cities and states have actually made this as a kind of curriculum for their kids as well. So that's how you scale. You scale because of people. You scale because you persist. You scale because you wanted to do something as an idea for the country, within the country and also for the world, right? And that story got reverberated in terms of what we do. And of course, we landed then on Indus in terms of what we want to do for language. And you scale for empowerment as well. We scale for empowerment. This is empowerment of sorts. This is empowerment. Yes, yes. Really interesting. Okay, very curious to know, what problem were you looking to solve with Project Indus? <laughs> it was not exactly a problem, it was thrust upon to us as a challenge. So I, I, I don't know whether you remember 2023, Sam was in India and, and somebody from the crowd asked him, can India do the same with two developers and um, some money, which is lesser, right? There were some talks about $10 million that we can actually, uh, that we can actually do that. I still remember 11.30, I was making the two boys sleep. I've got very little ones, 11 and 6. So I was making them sleep and suddenly CP calls me and he says, what do you think? So I was actually in a mode to sleep and I told CP, I said, decide what you want to do. And of course, Pat came the reply on Twitter saying, from one CEO to another, challenge accepted. Huge thanks to CP. I think he was a visionary when he led Tech Mahindra. And that really catapulted this vision, right? And suddenly I also hear from people saying that December, 18th December is the date when you have to ship this out in beta version. So I called up CP. I said, why 18 services? You're going to give me a birthday gift. That's my <laughs> birthday. And this was in June. I knew ChatGPT. I knew Lama was coming in from Meta. What is that differentiation that I could produce in this system? So I went into dialect. So I said, Hindi is spoken in 37 plus different ways in our country. Can I just look at Hindi? And can I just look at the dialects? Question was, where is the data for dialects? We have very limited data. So I then sent these teams out um, into the Hindi heartland and said, collect data, 
figure out what is going on. We'll also have to, once you collect the data, we'll also strip off the data because of bias and ethics and then so on and so forth. And then we made the first model as a large language model. We completed beta on 19th of December, not 18th. CP was still happy. I was crossing one day, but then we finally released Abilated it in March. Gift. The ablated gift in terms of what we want right. to do. But we then released it in March saying, we'll do it open source. We'll do it to trigger the innovation ecosystem. But we were there to show the world that look, art of large language model can be done at a much lesser cost than what was proposed. And that was the challenge, uh, number one. I think there's a lot of people who are now doing it. Uh, and, and the way we actually now look at it is that Indus is just a one small cog in the whole wheel of large language models that are being built up. And can we actually do it kind of a switchboard response? When now when people want to talk to machines and understand whether you are a housewife, you're a farmer, you're a banker, for example, can you use your own dialect um, to connect to some of these things? And there's another reason to it. The other reason is that you are probably younger to me. With my gray hair, when I, where I come from, our first thought process is in our native language. True. So my first thought is always in Punjabi or Hindi. My first thought is not in English. So I have to really construe English out of my thoughts to present my idea to somebody in a much more eloquent way, which is different from today's kids. I think today's kids, the nativity of language is only English. They speak in English, they think in English. But I wanted to do it for every Indian and not just the rural sector, right, who doesn't speak English so often. But also, let's say for my mother, my mother would never be able to go to a website today on an e-commerce and go and do a transaction. She'll always be scared of. But can she use her voice? Can she use her own Punjabi accent to really order something from a machine? And that was the, the only driving force for me that I said that if I can make Indians work on this fashion, we'll succeed in some ward and we'll, we'll have a ripple in the, in the whole ocean. Now, I'd really love to know this from you that, you know, on one hand, India is trying to be digitally inclusive. Yeah. The other hand, you know, we are trying to innovate. Yeah. How do we balance these two? I think the both, both should be balanced, but I think sovereignty is that important component that we have to maintain in terms right. of what we do. While we innovate, you know, whatever we do in innovation, we have to balance the other component as well in terms of being inclusive. And that's where the responsible part of the technology really comes in. I can go on on a marketing spiel saying that responsibility means that you are transparent, you are ethical, you are bias-free, you have explainable and so on and so forth. There are things that we can do and there are things that we can't do very honestly in terms of the technology and the AI in general. But what our effort is that can we have an oath as a technologist when we build something that it's not going to impact people and it's not going to be harmful to anybody in terms of that? Can it be more inclusive in terms of when people join in, are they easier? So for example, when we were building, we actually built an app called Atmanirbha Krishi, yeah. which was in 2021. The whole idea was, can we look at the design of the app and a farmer would use it, right? So when a farmer uses it, the farmer's hands are going to be very rough. Mobile phone screens really don't work with rough hands. Can we have voice component built in? Can we have easy scroll so that his hand moves out? So I think inclusivity actually is also to do with what ethics you have and I have to right. respect each other in terms of that human structure, but also ensure that whatever we give is much more easier and convenient for somebody to utilize. Only then people will come and utilize this. Otherwise, people would leave it and say, look, it's another gimmick that you're giving it to me, right? So when we build things in my lab or my AI team, one of our biggest component, and when we are building for society in general, otherwise we build for businesses and businesses know what they want. Right. But when we build for society at large, we really think on these facets saying, will people come and use this with minimalistic training? If we can do that, then I think we've made an inclusive technology piece for people to utilize. Else we'll have to rework on the inclusivity. Right. right. Nikhil, this has been super insightful. Thank you so much for taking all the time. Thank you so much. Great. It's a pleasure. Thank you.